you whatever whatever it is oh apparently i guess since i'm talking i get to do intros apparently yeah yeah thanks for the heads up there zoom that recording is in progress <laughs> hi welcome to binary jazz where a cadre of friends comes together cadre. to uh, discuss a topic uh with uh little to no information on said topic joined as always by my friends on the internet allison chris i'm gary binary jazz does us if you want to know more but if you're here you knew enough to find us so this ain't your point of entry is all i'm saying <laughs> hi chances are your point of entry are you know one of us <laughs> <laughs> probably that's, that's fairly <laughs> likely oh i didn't even open up my binary jazz collection of tabs i'm just you have a collection of tabs for binary jazz i have a group of tabs for binary jazz yeah i have like a single note in my one password for how to access our server and and like i don't have my password i don't know what my password is i just reset it anytime i need to log in like i i i guess i'm practicing minimalism here (laughs) i did my annual my annual binary jazz donation to wikipedia yesterday Nice. Oh, that's red. Because because I use it so much. In 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 the name of binary jazz. No, it's in my name. Sorry, I should put it in the name of binary jazz though, because it's not like I get a tax receipt or anything, or I do, but it's U.S. It's like I use it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I I uh we're, I donated somewhere the other day, and uh, uh, somebody else like that is like part of this saw that I donated his name message and said. Did you get like a tax deductible receipt? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, for the amount I donated, that's a lot of paperwork to bring into this. So, no. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can only assume that no is the answer because I don't have it. So, whatever. Oh. Um, how do we? Oh, I know how we do. It. I was going to ask how do we how do we schedule publishing these podcasts? We use like a server that has Prong running, and you just schedule the post. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I schedule it and then it comes out. Yeah, okay. Out. Okay. But, but, um, that is Chris. Chris schedules it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just a WordPress thing. Just WordPress scheduling posts. Um, but uh, I did not upload the video to YouTube last did you week. Do? What does that mean? That means that there is a YouTube embed that or a, a spot for YouTube embed that doesn't have anything because it didn't get uploaded to YouTube. Can you just put the Rickroll video in? Yeah, that's totally okay. what I'm going to do. Drive away our one viewer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we don't. Is there any, what's the benefit? Honestly, what's the benefit of using YouTube over um, like a podcast client? I mean, for I mean video, we do. obviously. We do use, uh, We. I mean, it is published to all the podcast clients. Uh, well, but- I know, but. Like what's the, what would be the benefit from a, a consumer perspective? Like, I guess video is the answer. Like I get to see these lovely people that are talking. Yes, that is the benefit. Okay. When you like make video. visual references, like. Yeah, there's, yeah when there's, I talk about the size of the fish that I caught, which right, I frequently yeah, right. do. This thing. I mean, there's a fair amount of, of uh, times when we uh, do things with our hands, uh, <laughs> wherein uh, it might be, might be something that, need to like, like see um what uh, what uh what card was that allison it was a peacock what does that mean what do you think it means <laughs> superficial um, beauty but really annoying uh, <laughs> but really annoying sounds really annoying underneath yeah, but well, it's I can see what the card creator meant it to mean in my little pamphlet. Well, but does but Chris, I don't know if like the thing is a peacock doesn't always show its feathers, right? Like it's a it's a decision. So hidden beauty. It's not Resurrection, really hidden. vision, nope. sensitivity, beauty, but not in an external way. Instead, peacock is a reminder not to take beauty or anything too seriously. Lightheartedness, laughter, and gratitude. Beauty comes from the inside and makes you beautiful on the outside. Yeah, but 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 okay, okay. But peacocks, like it, it's a peacock, not a peahen. And peacocks have those feathers because they are 
it is external beauty because they're trying to attract to attract a mate. It's all external. Pe- peacocks are assholes. Like they're asshole birds. Welcome and they to do the it. To, they Chris do it to attract Bird. attention. That is that is entirely why they why they have like the feathers that look the way they do and why they put them up and you know wave them around because they're trying Maybe to attract. Maybe that's the mates. part though that they're they're not always up. They're just like sometimes just down. That's not really hidden, though. Semantics. <laughs> um, I, I won't argue that peacock. Today's, uh, being... today's topic oh, is uh, is peacock. Peacocks are assholes. Yeah, oh, oh. they sure are loud. I I have a friend that lives near Miami uh, who has them in her yard frequently, and um, it, it's problematic. And there was a discussion on whether they are edible or not, but that's just a Florida conversation. Like Wait, what? same thing with a guan. Are they edible? Like, could you could you exert population control by eating them? I mean, I mean anything. Yeah, well, not anything. Everything's ever. edible. Yeah, mm-hmm. at least once. <laughs> Maybe just once in some cases. Was- well, the same topic when it gets cold in Miami and the iguanas fall out of trees. Like, are they edible? Like. They have lean. this um, mushroom guidebook and it tells you whether things are edible or not. And there's one listening that says like edible, but you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, you won't get poisoned, but it doesn't taste good. <laughs> I was talking to, uh, we've already started recording, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I did intros. We, uh, <laughs> this is just the banter portion of the day. Um, I was talking to an old manager yesterday. Well, he's not old. Previous man. Um, <laughs> Starting it off right. I'm killing it. And uh, and we 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 don't we talk you know maybe like once every four months or so is our is our cadence. Uh, we just catch up uh, for like an hour, and it's it's wonderful. It's great because he's he's a, a brilliant mind in the industry, et cetera, uh, et cetera. <laughs> brilliant mind industry, et cetera. You know, blah blah blah, whatever. No, but he really is, and I enjoy talking to him, and it makes me think a lot about how I approach work. Um, but we were talking about you know like my move from Florida to North Carolina. And uh, I was observing that there were a lot of things that just happened in Florida that I accepted as normal um, <laughs> that are like not every, actually normal. Like everything. And so, yeah. So one of my examples was like, there was a story that someone was laughing about in my old company Slack about how someone took an alligator to a quickie mart. Uh, and then I, I, I was like, oh, I wonder where that was. And I Googled it and it was like four blocks from me. So then I was like, that doesn't seem like looking at where that area is, like that doesn't seem too outlandish actually. Um, and then I realized, like, I was, like, defending this as, like, a normal thing. Like, it should just be fine for someone to bring an alligator into a quickie mart. Like, not, like, on a leash, but, like, carrying it. Like, a small, you know, like. And then, uh, so we laughed about that. And I said, I don't, I feel like if that happened in, in the city I'm in now, it would be, like, news for a week. Whereas in Florida, it was, like, a blip. And, like, you know, the next article was on, God, who knows what. That place is crazy as hell, man. Well, it's like the, there was that thing that was floating around that was, basically like type in Florida man and then your birthday and see what Ugh. comes up. And there's like, there's something for every day and it's just, exciting. Oh yeah, you get options. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I, yeah. So in the past I have defended Florida and saying, well, some of that is the sunshine laws in that like, uh, as a result yes, of I like, do recall you saying that OJ mm-hmm. Simpson. Yes. Thank OJ Simpson for this sunshine laws, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the reality is like, I feel like if someone were in another state and like hopped into a place with an alligator, like that's not, that's not, that's not an arrest record. I think that's not sunshine law stuff. So I, I say that, but that only applies to like arrest related uh, stories. There are a lot of crazy stories in Florida that have nothing to do with people getting arrested. And I realized that, that the sunshine laws only cover a portion of the craziness uh, and a small percentage of that. So uh, yeah, the place is wacky as hell. I love it. It's home. I, I don't know that I have the energy to live there anymore. <laughs> it takes a lot out of you. That's a good way of putting it, though. Oh, I talked to my parents on Wednesday. I, we can't go there. What's the topic today? <laughs> they live in Florida, so that's all. Um, the topic today is carpuscule. Carpuscule. C A R P C R E O C R O Crepuscule P U S C U L E. Yes. 
But this is not a spelling bee, Chris, as we've discussed previously. <laughs> uh, um, the crepuscule. Is, I know this word actually. Is I, I when, don't. I don't know what it means, but I've heard it before. I've actually probably even used it in a sentence. A crepuscule is when you get like like a black hat or something, and then you kind of pick at it, and then it like it like fills <laughs> fills with like like pus again and kind of makes it like a pussy uh scab um and that's a crepuscule <laughs> <laughs> well that's gonna, make, that's gonna make my description even grosser because <laughs> you know like when you look at the outside of a pineapple and there's there's like the little individual cells those yeah. are the pineapple crepuscules oh. Yep. That seems mundane. Definitely... Next to Chris's definition. It does seem mundane. And also, like, I don't want to talk about food after Chris's, so. <laughs> oh, actually, I do want to talk about food, but not in the context of the topic. Um, so uh, Katie uh, is uh, coming up on uh, a year being vegetarian. And I don't, it was like, I think it was Tuesday night we had dinner. And it was the first time she had had salad like conventional boring salad, like iceberg lettuce, carrots, radish, you know, that thing. Uh, she was like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm, I, it just, it, it caught me as funny that it was the, uh, the first time she had a head salad. We're also looking at uh, when she does hit the year, like early in October, we're going to go, there's a, a vegan restaurant in uh, Charlotte. I think we're going to do takeout from to celebrate. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I feel like it can be hard to become a vegetarian in a family of non-vegetarians sometimes, depending on the flow and how meals are handled. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, initially I think we had a harder time like thinking through like, how do we do, um, how do we do dinner that also um, like Katie has things to eat, but yeah, uh, you know, like we're not all, we're not all vegetarian uh, and that's fine. Um, but I think that's actually gotten easier because um, we've explored and found things that she gets excited about. And uh, we were already, you know, a few times a week, like, you know, just vegetarian by default, that meal was just vegetarian and it wasn't a, there wasn't any second thought to it. So um, yeah, it's uh anyway, I'm excited for her. That's my food conversation today. Mm-hmm. I waited until I moved out or like I went to school and lived somewhere else basically and like had control over my own because my, my it's like it's not like my parents weren't into it it's just that it was they weren't into the extra planning and um they couldn't at the time imagine a world without an entree that was meat mm-hmm. um but they, they've since come around they can they eat vegetarian like all the time <laughs> um but just took it just took like 20 years <laughs> yeah my parents have 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 uh no longer think it's weird or and no longer ask the questions well what do you eat or like well, what do you do <laughs> what do you eat seriously generally like, food i mean yeah. it's, it's well but that's the thing like like especially for people that that aren't uh don't have vegetarians they interact with very or vegans that they interact with uh they just like don't understand how to formulate a meal without meat in it and like it's the same meal it just doesn't have meat in it (laughs) you know like you do something else just replace that thing with some other thing that is similar and then you have what we eat yeah i i've uh i don't know sometime this year i started doing this thing where like sundays was like the the day where i like i really go whole hog cooking and like not just like oh make dinner but like really like i'm gonna go to like the most raw ingredients i can get you know um uh, like sometimes. carpuscules, go, yeah. go like foraging for carpuscules. Like, oh, yeah, yep. Um, We're going to see some carpuscules. We're going to go to the uh, the beach and we're going to see like tide pools and stuff. So there's definitely going to be some carpuscules on the rocks. Oh, that might actually be what it is. Right? No, those are limpets. Oh. <laughs> mm, barnacles. That's, no, that's that's a much maligned band from the 90s. Limpets? <laughs> yeah. You could go to the tide pools <laughs> and the crepuscule of the day. 
Oh, is that um, a clue or is that uh, is, are you just like making shit up now? It's a clue. <laughs> Carpuscle. Okay. Oh, it's a type of fish. It's a type of <laughs> type of shellfish. No, but it's I can fish see how with, with only one vowel. Led you to think that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I want to talk about sweet potatoes. Okay, sweet I wanted potatoes. to go. Sorry, Sorry, did you say street potatoes? No, street sweet potatoes. potatoes. Yes, um, I got sweet potatoes on Sunday, and Brussels sprouts, um, and sweet potatoes like half the size that I got the Brussels sprouts too, so they would get a little crispy, and roasted them. And I keep thinking about them, especially like the outside leaves of the Brussels sprouts. Like, oh, that right there is a meal. Those two things with seasoning. Honestly, you like you get your you get your 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 sweet potato or your uh, Brussels sprouts crispy. How do you do you like uh, be, put anything no, on them? Just to... the outside. Well, I mean, I well, so I put them in a bag with some oil and some seasoning bag some, and, okay. and like and shake them in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that they're evenly coated. And then I probably took them out. I did uh, like 400 degrees for uh, 20 minutes, took them out. Uh, they weren't done, obviously. Threw some more seasoning on, rotated, flipped, blah, 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 back in. And then like the seasoning I put on was like, I put like a white pepper, salt, I'm trying to remember what else. Probably oregano. That seems to be like one I grab all the time. I don't know. I don't even remember what I put on. doesn't matter. Um, but then at the end, I was like, all right, I'm going to throw just a little bit of uh, brown sugar on and just like a light caramelization. Not enough to be like, oh, this is sweet, but enough to like get there. But what happened as a result was that a lot of the Brussels sprouts that had like the outside from being shaken in a bag and being moved around, like they were the outside was kind of, you know, beat up. So these these leaves were flaking off and they got so nicely done. I'm like, I just want that. Like I want like yeah. a bag full of that. And when uh, we last time oh. we were in Monterey uh or last time we went to the aquarium in monterey i should say uh we actually had food there and you never eat food at the at the monterey bay aquarium because the food is ridiculously expensive it's just not a thing that you do uh but we did that thing and um they had it was like caramelized brussels sprout leaves like specifically mm. it was caramelized brussels and it was that thing that you're describing where it's literally just the leaves and they're all super like like hard and crispy and they're they're amazing and it's it's like different than kale because it's a thinner leaf to start with so mm -hmm. it's a totally different sensation i i think i know what i'm doing after this call yeah i've been i've like been trying to you figure out make how to a do zine, that thing. you would you would make a food scene <laughs> <laughs> and it would just be all about whatever you ate that week i mean i could talk about that a lot <laughs> a lot I mean, I also did, I also tried to do like Parmesan uh, angel hair pasta and uh, it was a disaster. So it was like, a, it was like, it was really um, uh, on the, it was on the drier side. I don't mm -hmm. know what I missed there. Um, and it, it just, it didn't, it, the noodles were really sticky together. And I expected that like with more starch and angel hair, but it didn't, it just didn't pan out. It was fine. You can't win them all. And then I did, and I did like garlic shrimp with them. Well, obviously Katie's not eating garlic shrimp, but that was just like a thing by itself. It was like, a, there were three big things on the table and you could eat whatever portion of whichever one you wanted. I didn't want any of the noodles. <laughs> the kids seemed like the noodles. Like, okay, All right, it's fine. And that's a carpuscle. Man. <laughs> Last night we had um, mango and pineapple. Yeah. And other stuff, but the mango and pineapple really spoke to me. Have you ever seen when people cut a pineapple by like taking those carpuscules? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> then you have like a little handle on it. Yeah. I would think for like party events, that would be perfect. Thankfully, I don't throw parties. So yeah. never have I to figure out how to do all my that. pineapple by myself. <laughs> <laughs> wrote a pineapple song once you wrote a pineapple song yeah i should say i helped write a pineapple song once i didn't write the entire pineapple song was it uh about apples and pineapples and pens nope i had nothing to do with that hmm. i don't i don't understand that it's funny but i have no <laughs> idea what the heck was going on there you know what i'm so, talking you know what i'm referring oh, yeah. to right okay. pen, pineapple apple pen yeah. and it was so cute i, I showed it to to Ty, because he was very young the first time I saw it. 
and it was so cute try, seeing him try to figure out how to say pen pineapple apple pen because it <laughs> it's not really a tongue twister but when you're you know i guess three or four whatever he was everything's like it, a tongue twister when you're that <laughs> yeah yeah it's a lot to get the words out and together so yeah yeah man i so i had another thought about food mm-hmm. <laughs> not particular food um but just food in general, like there is a, um, uh, there's a thing where like when you eat with people, right? Like there's like a, there's like relationship there, like it, whether you want it or not, like, but there's like a, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? Like there's a, um, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, but also like um, your, um, you have to like let your guard down, right? A vulnerable, that's the word I'm thinking. There's a little bit of vulnerability there you're dining with someone um that's it that was a thought it didn't really get you have to put your caveman weapons down yeah i i mean i i it is definitely something like like deeply rooted in being like an animal you know for sure uh, i agree with that yeah yeah yep okay but aren't you picking your caveman weapons up in the to eat the food Oh, those like are different things. Those are those are civilized person. Yeah, those are. I mean, those are just your dining tools. <laughs> it depends on what you're eating. Like if it's a if it's a handheld. It's true. If it's thing. like medieval times. Which I, can't like I will I will club you with a grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh dang! I want that for lunch. <laughs> These are all dreams you can make a reality, though. It's true. Oh, I and I still have some really good parmesan in there. Maybe I'll just do that parmesan and thing. All right, one more fun uh, anecdote that has nothing to do with the topic because that's how I'm everything today. has something to do with the topic. I'll be curious how you uh, associate it here. Um, we're doing these. I'm, I'm Challenge walking accepted in the morning, uh, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to get there or not. But I thought maybe, like, I started looking at it and I, I did some math, and I'm like, you know, it wouldn't take too much more effort to say I'm going to walk a thousand miles before my next birthday. Um, so. Now I'm really motivated when my alarm clock goes off as opposed to previous when my alarm clock went off and it was like a 50-50 shot whether I was going to get up and walk. But now I'm like, oh, damn, I got to do it because I got to put the numbers in. Um, so Wednesday I got up. It was fine. Weather was, uh, you know, whatever. Put my shoes on out the door. I kind of wake up like a mile into it is when I, my brain starts working. Uh, and I'm like, oh, damn, is that thunder? Uh, so I'm kind of paying attention to it. And I get downtown and... Uh, and it's uh downtown's like a mile and a quarter from me and i'm looking and listening it's it's pretty far off in the distance pull up my phone to check and see like yeah we're gonna be getting rain in the you know the next like 20 minutes or so and i'm not gonna be home by then even if i turn around i'll just keep going so i get like two miles in and i'm at the you know almost the furthest point where i go and it's it's still thundering and i'm like i think it's getting closer and then so i'm doing the thing like where lightning happens and you count and i I counted like 15 i'm like "Eh, that's far enough away uh, and then it's like getting closer and closer as I'm walking. I'm like, this thing is moving quick. And um, I'm about to be like in an area where it's like an open field. Like I should not do that. So <laughs> I sent Rhonda a message. I'm like, Hey, uh, is there any chance you could pick me up at the park? Knowing that, you know, it's early. The kids are just awake and uh, got to load a whole group up to come get me. Yeah, I can do that. And uh, so I, uh, I, at the park, I camped out underneath the uh, entry to the bathroom because it wasn't open yet at that point in the morning, just waiting. And the rain started to fall and I'm waiting you know, for them to come pick me up. And uh, uh, there were a few hits of lightning that were close enough and not enough that confirmed my decision to not <laughs> venture onward. Um, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm here with you today because I'm not dead. And, there are uh, moments where you're like, yeah, I'm convening with nature. And then there's other moments where you're like, mm, nature doesn't like me. <laughs> I should... Uh... And I've done that walk where it's like raining and there's no lightning. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's different. I mean, in some ways it's a little unpleasant because it's cooler and my socks are wet and it's not ideal, but also like, it's a total different interaction with everything. Um, and it sounds different and feels different. And, you know, um, this would have felt different too. Like crispy. I'd have been like a Brussels sprout leaf. <laughs> and that is. Carpuscule is when you get crispy, like a Brussels sprout. 
There you go. I'm gonna, I, I'm you gonna have to swing by the uh, farmers market tomorrow and see. That's the best way to plant vegetables. What so, do you have? What are crepuscules? Crepuscule is another word for twilight. Twilight. Oh. Yeah, I wasn't really? close. <laughs> I mean, not even a little. <laughs> yeah, I was. I mean, I guess because it sounds like pustule. Um, we did yeah. get some feedback on the internet. Real, real feedback? You always get my hopes up and then it's yeah, like... Yeah, <laughs> no, not real feedback. Um, That's rad. <laughs> we never get real feedback. This is in a combination of Russian and uh, English. Oh. Uh, it is from the person... I'm not going to, you know, share the, the, uh, the links. There are many links, uh, but the person who uh, the name on it is Ruth Abavi, but the email address is <laughs> Allison gone, 1992. Oh no. Um, okay. So there is a section in Russian. Can you read it? I'm translating it now. So the part that's in Russian, I'm just trying to figure out where. Okay, that's where it breaks. All right, I'm just trying to figure out where it breaks. All right, so the part that's in Russian is, I absolutely agree with you. There is something about that, and it's a good idea. I support you. And then following that is in English, uh, and it says, your favorite photographs. It was all, and then a URL fairly enjoyable he was they mentioned a playboy and gambler and buenos aires was a city still is i mean it was kind of supportive there and i, I appreciated the like well then the russian stuff is is new to me because i didn't translate that when it came in so i only saw the uh your favorite photographs it was all link here uh, fairly enjoyable. He was, they mentioned a playboy and gambler and Buenos Aires was a city. And I was like, okay, this is obviously robot spam. So I didn't, I didn't even get the, the supportive stuff. I feel like the supportive stuff is probably the best part of that spam. Obviously robot spam is I'm calling dibs on for band name. Obviously robot spam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Boy, spam is a spam's tough, huh? Again, like, just think about again. what's that? Nothing. I was making a joke about spam. Oh, I just I'm like vegetarians here. Well, I don't know. I, I don't I don't appreciate the food, but just conceptually as a company, like the internet's like, oh, we're calling unwanted mail your product. That's fair. That's not that's not what the marketing department wants. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the, the the product development team actually cares. Product development is spam. Oh God. We're working on a new concept. It's called a Dyson Sphere. <laughs> it's been too long since we spoke of the Dyson Sphere. Has it though? Has it been too long? I'm not it's, sure. It's, it's ever present. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know that I would say it's been too long. <laughs> the the uh, less we talk about it, you know, probably the better it is. The larger it gets. Nope. It's no. never going to get better. It's never going to get better, Chris. <laughs> It's the title of the episode that dropped last Friday, Rotten to the Core. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, man. No, that was, that was the rot is so deep. Oh, is that the what it was? Yeah, so the deep. rot is so deep. God. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting your rotten, uh, your rotten titles mixed up. I... I must say, I skipped that episode, which makes it not special. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I should listen to it. I should, I should subscribe and listen while I watch. <laughs> should you? I mean, <laughs> why stop a good thing? <laughs> why start now? <laughs> why, yeah, exactly. why start listening now? Yeah. Why, why make a commitment to this thing at this point? <laughs> well, that's fair. You have a solid point. I, um... Can you hear the fountain behind me? Uh, I cannot. Okay. No. Okay. 
I, I can through my headphones and it's, I was just thinking, well, you know, whatever, 38 minutes or whatever into this thing, maybe I should have unplugged it. Whatever. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. No, well, don't ruin the illusion that it's a gigantic fountain you can't unplug. Uh, it's kind of weird. Like, we, like, I don't know. It looks like it's been there a while. Um, and the previous yeah, but you know like, that I like to envision you on kind of a Hearst Castle property. Well, let's go, let's go visit my phone. That's I don't great. know if I'll keep internet over there. Don't ruin my illusion. <laughs> oh no, it's it, it's I think I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Like it's it's illusion, actually a thing. illusion. I think so, there should be so like no, there's no the statues in that fountain. My illusion is there's, ruined. <laughs> there's there is. There's this little naked boy, cherub or whatever. <laughs> little naked boy. <laughs> And behind is a, a birdhouse for the kids made. And here's another one right here. Oh, nice. They were like, can we hang it by the trees around the fountain? Like, of course. And, and then just past the fountain, like the hill rolls off. Let's go look down the hill. The as long as you don't roll here. down the hill. I know. Well, it's a long way down. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh. Like it goes, it goes way down there. There's yeah. probably like some, yeah, there's like a. a You're not in the poison place. ivy right now, are you? No, this is uh, this is English ivy. Uh, there actually has been a little poison ivy over here. I should check. I don't see any at this point, but I can show you where the poison ivy is too. Uh, walk with me. Let's see some poison ivy. <laughs> Walking toward the podcast is now called "Walk with Me: The Gary Kovar Story." <laughs> um, so I was sitting right there to my right. We went over to the fountain, which is over my right shoulder. But the poison ivy is. Let's see. Oh, um. Yeah, there's actually some right here on this tree, that like yellowish green that's actually dying poison ivy, which is cool. But down this hill, there's a lot of English ivy and in the, with the English ivy is the poison ivy. That's sneaky. Oh, it's frustrating. Oh, that's, that's the area where I was. Uh, oh, there's some like right there too. I, I keep this area clean so the kids don't get into it. But this is the area here where I was down the hill and was like hitting it with a weed whacker and then realized like I was aerosolizing the... Uh, the <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then here's here's the creepy stairs. I think I've shown you pictures of these, but these are pretty awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. When we first moved in, like you couldn't even really see down there. So I've done quite a bit of cleaning up, and uh, uh, and then down there is just if I had internet down there, I would work down there all the time. I would need like some kind of mosquito protection, but uh, it's just a gigantic I, dome of mosquito netting. I I would love to over time like build like some platforms down there uh, so we could have a spot to go and run like, you know, electric down there. So we can try and fans, keep the mosquitoes away and go down there and eat. And the kids love to go down there and play. It's, it's, it's such a weird, like that area down there can't be developed. because It's just not really accessible and it's a steep hill, which is great because it means that all the stuff growing back there is just, you know, like I go back there, like I cut the uh, really aggressive vines down and then just leave everything else as it is and just marvel at it. There's that. And that's a Chris Pesco. Oh, wait, no, maybe that part of the show. Do you know? <laughs> do you, wait, uh, it's, uh, it's the season where the hickory trees drop their nuts. Ugh. So we have like. Oh, that's fun. Thousands of these, which hurt when they fall. I was going to say, yeah. some, you get smacked in half. Them. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Binary Jazz.